Welcome back to Fort Collins. The Ram fans, they need something to cheer about. It was all about the Aggies leading by 14 at the half. Our Wolf alongside Jaron Collins. And Jaron, tell me, why was Utah State so successful in the first half? They were getting wide open looks on the offensive end. When you, get, you give those knockdown shooters that good of looks, don't be surprised with what's going to happen. They're going to make shots. And then on the defensive end, they were really able to stymie the Colorado State offense. All right, let's take a look at highlights from the first half. And there were a lot more from the Aggies as Butterfield knocks down one of his two triples. What's amazing about these highlights, just look, where is the defense right now? Utah State, the number one three-point shooting team in the conference, is getting too good a look. Looks right now on the offensive end. Colorado State has to do a better job of defending the three-point shooting, and in particular, Preston Medlin. Then on the offensive end for Colorado State, they got a uh, can knock down shots right now. There's something over the rim. All right, Jaron, here are the stats, and how about a 15 to zero advantage from long range? Yeah, right now, look, plan A isn't working for Colorado State in terms of shooting the basketball, so you got to go to plan B. Get on the offensive glass. They only have five offensive rebounds, but zero second chance points. They have to do a better job of converting. In their last game against Air, Air Force, they had 21 offensive rebounds for 20 second point chance. That's what they need to do in order to get back into this game. Every possession in these first five minutes of the half will be key for the Rams to get back into this one. Bejarano is their stud. He gets the easy two, and that's what this team does well is get to the rim. And that's what they need to do. You cannot settle for jump shots. You have to play in attack mode. Get to the get to the rim. Put pressure on the Utah, Utah State defense. Butterfield, who on his second made three in the first half, now has 100 made career threes. Roland uses the screen from Shaw. Shaw with the shot clock winding down. Tough shot, gets it to go. Jared Shaw. You're Jerson Santo. You have to know that Jared Shaw is going to turn over that left shoulder, sit on it, make him turn back over his right shoulder and use his offhand to finish. Avila. They don't double this time, and he misses the shot anyway. What do you think about the change in strategy? Because Avila was doubled on every touch in the first half. You don't want to give the same player the same look. So for Utah State on the defensive end, they're, they're going to still double team. But right now, what they need to do is do a better job on the defensive end and close out to those three-point shooters. Roland knocks down the triple. Six made threes in the Aggies, up 34-17. Thirty-four, seventeen, Utah State in front of Colorado State. Now let's revisit the AT&T fast analysis. Yeah, for Utah State, they have to knock down those threes, and you see it right there. Six of ten from the three-point line. I mean, I can I can do math. If you're making threes and the other team is making twos, you're going to win the basketball game. But for Colorado State, they only have two assists. Have to do a better job of finding guys on time and on target and attacking the rim. Deciman, number 10, was cut and he was open. Avila couldn't get him the ball, taps it out. Octius has it. Rams need a run to get this crowd back into it. Avila can't finish. A loose ball, foul on the Rams. First team foul to half for either team. See the big three for Colorado State. Well under their season averages thus far. And nobody else on the team has scored. So it's one of those things where the guys who are doing the production, they're getting the production on the offensive end, have to step up. But it all comes back to on the defensive end. Start to build stops. Cut into this lead. Try to get your crowd into this game. Pick up the excitement and energy level in this building. I have never been here when it's been this quiet. Deciman from 15 gets the jumper to go, and he has been very quiet. Joe Deciman 
averaging just under nine points per game. The entire staff has said he's the most improved player on the team. Right now for Colorado State, they need a spark. Somebody's got to make a hustle play, come up with a 50-50 ball. I mean, maybe even Coach, Coach Stacy takes a technical. You know, they need something to fire themselves up right now. With all due respect, he's quite comfortable getting a technical foul, so I, that's not a terrible idea. No foul, no foul. The real spark plug is a guy off the bench and Dwight Smith. Wouldn't be surprised if he comes off the bench early in the second half. He has almost had the steal and then lost his footing. There is Dwight Smith. An integral part of rebuilding this program. Tim Miles took this program to great heights. Larry Eustace came in last year, took him to even greater heights. And Coach told us today he believes next year the Colorado State can win the Mountain West. Butterfield for his third triple, not this time. Shaw the rebound. Both these teams are excellent in rebounding margin. Plus 6.6 .6 for, uh, excuse me, Utah State, plus 5.8 for Colorado State. Why does it feel like all the key rebounds are ending up with Utah State? They are dominating the boards right now with a point of emphasis. We talked about that with Coach Morrow at, at Shootaround. He knows that Coach Larry Eustace's teams, they do two things. They defend and they rebound. There's a point of emphasis to get on the boards for Utah State. The well, Coach Morrow's team is listening. They've out rebounded the Rams 27 15. Oh, nice pass. Gets it to Kyle Davis for the two. That's Preston Medlin right there. You see the vision by that young man. Number two in assists in the conference. Obvious missed a bunny. Holt can't finish. And Holt's got to be careful. He's got three. Medlin spins into traffic, tough shot, no. Not sure Coach Morrow would have liked that shot. It was so early in the clock. Especially with a 36 to 19 lead. Bejarano is bumped. Just the second team foul on Utah State. So Bejarano being aggressive. Any type of restriction of player movement is going to be called a foul with these new rules. And that's what you want to do if you're Colorado State. See if you can draw those fouls, get into the penalty, get yourself shooting the one and one with no time coming off the clock, cutting into the lead. Akias will drive, pull up. He's been good on that mid-range shot. Can't get it to go this time. Did a good job of using his shoulder to create some separation, but it's kind of been the story of the evening for Colorado State. Unable to convert and make shots. Utah State, another offensive rebound. They now have six offensive rebounds in the game. And look for them to start to grind and just wear down Colorado State on, the, on this offensive end. Medlin, stop and pop, no. Menlin's got great form on that jumper, I'll tell you. When he stops, he gets so square to the basket. We had a great look that time. Definitely. He reminds me a little bit of Steve Blake. Very capable three-point shooter. Plays with a little bit of a chip on his shoulder. Great toughness. Octi is the three they need it. Can he deliver? No. And Holt's all over the back. No call. They're letting him play. Butterfield. Nice extra pass. Butterfield, long two, no. Davis got a hand on it. It's going to be an offensive foul on the Aggies. We will step away for a moment. Utah State's rolling. We'll see if the Rams can make a comeback when we return to Mobi Arena. Come on, Rams! Welcome back to Fort Collins. Last four seasons, Colorado State has been to the postseason last two seasons they've gone to the NCAA tournament. This program has never gone three straight seasons. That goal is only realistic this season, Jaron, if they win the conference tournament. But getting to the postseason is certainly realistic for the Rams. Yeah, they played well in stretches. They're coming into this in tonight's game with a two-game win streak. They're going to have to get hot. 
heading into the conference tournament in order to have a chance to win the tournament and get into the NCAA tournament. But we'll see what happens right now. But the way that they're playing right now, they're not going to beat anybody unless they pick up their effort. Tough shot. No good, but Octi is to the free throw line. Now, Octi has got hot against Air Force late, and they were down double digits in the first half of that game. This mountain to climb is taller, but they are capable of a comeback, and Octi has had 18 against Air Force. And he really delivered late with two late threes, and he was also 10 for 11 from the free throw line. Yeah, he did a terrific job on the offensive end, especially making plays late in the game, as you just mentioned. But right now for Colorado State, see if they can force turnovers. Uh, see if you can speed up Utah State on the offensive end. Uh, right now, you just got to just punch the paint, be aggressive, draw fouls, see if you can get them into the off into the penalty. It's one of those situations where they're searching right now and who's going to make a play for them. Utah State takes good care of the basketball. They average 11 turnovers per game. That's another strength for the Rams as well. They have the fewest turnovers, just nine per game. So both these teams, very good at taking care of the ball. Medlin can't get off the jumper. Shot clock now at five. This is not Shaw's game right here, but he's got to pull up. They put Shaw in a tough spot there. It was like putting Jared Collins at the three-point line. Avila. No basket, but to the free throw line. Hey, is that a dig at my three-point shooting? Hey, it's not that you weren't a magnificent offensive player, but is it fair to say your reputation was near the goal? Yeah, absolutely. And that's where Colorado State needs to make their money right now, particularly here in the second half. Good job of being aggressive by J.J. Avila, getting to the free throw line. You know, they had the defensive stop that they needed on the other end. We have a great matchup coming your way this weekend on CBS. Check out the 20 and four Pitt Panthers as they travel to Chapel Hill to take on Roy Williams, North Carolina Tar Heels. That's Saturday at 1 p.m. Eastern on CBS. Pitt and Syracuse will play tomorrow night. I think some uh, people, uh, Syracuse fans, may be a little cautious about that game, a little pensive going into that game. Fair enough. Pitt's a strong physical team. Crowd trying to get into it here as it's now a 13 point game. Medlin gets the two to go. He, he's fun to watch. That play right there reminded me of one of my old teammates. That was a Steve Nash baseline search dribble right there. Doing a good job of basically just running them around the baseline just until he got, came up with an open shot. Dwight Smith did a nice job there. He was falling to the ground, able to pass it. Decimate an NBA three, no good. Marcel Davis has it. And the shooting woes continue for Colorado State. 0 for 8 from the three point line. Foul is on Marcus Holt. That's foul number four on Marcus Holt, the junior from Aurora, Colorado. This reminds me of Steve Nash. You just get on the baseline. He's looking to pass. He's looking to create an opportunity for his teammates, but then he brings it back around and ends up with a little bunny in the paint. Very talented young man, Preston Med Medlin. The jumper is good. Medlin showing all kinds of offensive repertoire. He's now 5 of 13 from the field. Bejarano gets the two. They need a lot more of that. If they need more than that. They need stops on the defensive end. Marcel Davis, it's nice that they've got so many different guards that can distribute just like that. Davis to Jalen Moore. Moore puts it down and will go to the free throw line. First of all, you need ball pressure. Right there, you got to have active hands if you're defending that perimeter player. Get up and pressure him. And then on the back screen, call out the back screen. That was just too easy. Great offensive execution for Utah State. 
poor defensive effort for Colorado State. Jalen Moore, the true freshman, knocks down the three. Went to Skyview High School in Utah. Bejarano hits the triple. Bejarano can shoot the three. That's his 47th made three of the season. It's the first three made of the game. He's gonna have to catch fire if they want any chance of getting back into this lead. And that shot is blocked. Colorado State comes away with it. See if they can get some momentum going. Crowd wants to get into it. Avila <laughs> is fouled, and when we come back to Moby Arena, two free throws coming up for the Rams. Took a long time to get the first three. Bejarano finally gets one for the Rams. See if the Rams can come back. Utah State leads Colorado State 43 to 28. And let's look at basketball royalty. Teams with at least 21 wins in each of the last 14 seasons. There are four teams on there that you shouldn't surprise you at all. But I must say, when I saw Utah State was up there with Syracuse, Gonzaga, Duke, and Kansas, I thought, wow, that's a pretty great program. Again, it just speaks to the level of excellence that Utah State has had throughout the years. Stu Morrill has done a tremendous job. Now, for his team, though, they've got 14 wins right now. They're looking pretty good. We've still got 11.35 to go to get to 15. They have six regular season games left, the Mount West Tournament, and then some form of postseason play. So they're gonna have to play pretty well to keep that streak going. Again, and the competition doesn't get any easier for them. They do play San Diego State, number five team in the country later on. And they do play uh, against New Mexico as well. Top two teams in the Mountain West. Back to a 13-point game. If they could somehow, Jaron, get this under 10, it would certainly put a lot more pressure on the Aggies. Almost lost the handle. Bayerano's really turned up the defense. Davis from 10 feet. That is a kind of shooter's role. Tell you what, that one just went up on the rim and just kind of stopped there. It's a very fortuitous bounce for Utah State. Something to kind of stop the momentum that Colorado State had been developing. Akias hits the triple. He doesn't hit many of them. It's his 15th main three of the season. But now a 12-point game. You can hear the fans getting into it. Butterfield's triple, no. A loose ball, fight for it. Santo has it. Here come the Rams. Bejarano says clear out. He thinks he can take Butterfield. Jack to three. No, Santo had a hand on it, but it's going to be an offensive foul. Okay, that's a really difficult shot for Bejarano. Can he stop and pop? He just puts a lot of pressure to make come up with that three-point shot. There's got to be a shot selection has to play a huge factor for Colorado State coming down the stretch. That play's over, you gotta play forward, come up with a defensive stop. Shot is good. And Preston Medlin continues to quiet the crowd. Medlin's not, got 13 points now, Jaron. I mean, step on your but in the last three games, he's really stepped up in the second half. Foul on Utah State. Goes against Jalen Moore. And Preston Medlin, this guy's a senior. He has whatever that it quality is, and he seems to bring confidence to his whole team. 
not only can he make shots, but Coach, Coach Morrill told us at practice about his basketball IQ. This guy just makes the right play. You see what he's done, he's a knockdown shooter. He can do it off the bounce as well as on the catch. And he, he's a facilitator as well. He gets his teammates involved. And guys love playing with him because he's a fast first guard. Bentlett already has five assists. Second best in the Mountain West this season at 4.3 per game. We will take a break. The Rams starting to make this one interesting. It's a 12 point game. As a production assistant, I'm always running around. Need me to track down a really big prop? Totally new wardrobe? I'm on it. My dream is to make movies one day. Right now, I'm working on it. Because I know that one day, I'll be the one behind that camera. And I will do it for you. Back 47 35, our score. Larry Eustachy has been in a lot of places. Everywhere he goes, he wins. Now, if you look at the part that's highlighted in red, Colorado State is the fifth school that he's led to at least a 24 win season. So, Colorado State, Southern Miss, Iowa State, Utah State, and Idaho. Been successful every single stop. Speaks to his coaching ability his knowledge and his communication. And his recruiting ability, because some of the guys like Santo, Santo was going to Washington State number 15 in gold and managed to get him to change his mind. Medlin, yes, he does it again. Preston Medlin's got 16. I was coming out of the timeout. We call those ATOs after timeout plays. Great execution on the half court for Utah State. And that was a heat check right there for Preston Medlin. Butterfield to steal. Aggies have been great on both ends of the floor. They've lost a lot of close games, but this is a team you, you look at and you think, no one's gonna wanna play the Aggies in the Mountain West Conference Tournament. Look, they're four and seven in conference play, but that doesn't speak to who they are as a team. If they win tonight, they'll be on a three-game win streak in a very scary basketball team. They share the basketball, they defend it well, and they've got some knockdown shooters. Butterfield slices through traffic and gets it off the window. The lead back to 17. Butterfield now has 10 points. Great response out of the timeout from the Aggies. Eight twenty-one to go in the second half. Utah State all over Colorado State, 52 to 35. And you Stacy saying, hey, Bayerano, shoot the basketball. They need his offense. Yeah, they need his guard to stay aggressive. For my liking, I don't want him to settle for jump shots if I'm Coach Stacy. Tell him to get to the get to the rim. Put pressure on the defense. He's too good a player, too talented to settle for jump shots. He has to stay aggressive and look to attack seams and get to the free throw line. Rams are down to just one timeout left. Rams next foul, both teams will be in the bonus. How does Colorado State get back into this? Octius, basket in the foul, that'll help. But do you think it's all about getting to the rim for shots or setting up your best shooters and trying to get open looks or a combination of both? I, I say it's a combination of both, but they're really at their best when they have player movement and ball movement. If you can get guys attacking and get them shots in the paint, you know, look, your you, field goal percentage is going to go up the closer you shoot at the basketball to the rim. And then the likelihood of getting fouled increases with you getting into the paint. 14 point game, still plenty of time, eight minutes to go. Utah State content to run their half court offense. Medlin, the three, not this time. Ball out of bounds. It'll be Aggie basketball when we come back. 
Medlin has led the way as the Aggies lead by 14. The Utah State lead is 52 to 38. Coach Ustachi, it's been a frustrating night, but Jaron, as we go down the stretch and we see the emotion from Coach, what can the Rams do to come back, and if not win it in regulation, at least force overtime? They need to get stops on the defensive end, and then on the offensive end, put pressure on the Utah State defense. Do not settle for jump shots. See if you can get to the free throw line. They're shooting 14 of 15 from the free throw line, so they're having success once they're there. But they have to stay in attack mode and be aggressive. And the other thing is they have to find a way to stop Preston Medlin, who's been the best player on the floor tonight. And Medlin with the basketball, number 13. He's got 16 points on seven of 16 shooting. He also has five assists. Hold underneath on Dwight Smith. That's a tough call right there for Colorado State. They did a good job on the defensive end in the half court. They're switching, they're moving, playing with good energy. But then you pick up a cheap foul late into the shot clock, sending Kyle Davis to the free throw line. Davis on the season, 67%. Started his college career at Southern Utah, then went on a mission. He was gone for two seasons. He was pretty productive at Southern Utah. Eight and a half points and over five rebounds. He's gotten physically more mature, averaging close to eight rebounds per game. He's now 6'7", 225 pounds. Bejerano was told by Coach Stacy, you gotta shoot the basketball. He gives it to Santo, jump hook, no. Kind of the story of the game for Colorado State. They've got, they've had good looks at the rim. It's unable to convert the little bunnies. Davis, very nice. Marcel Davis, really not known much for scoring. Averages just under four points per game. And he has four tonight. How surprised are you at what's happened so far tonight? Right now that Colorado State just hasn't responded well to the Utah State when they basically have just come out and punched them in the mouth. They played well in spurts, that is Colorado State. But for the most part, Utah State has put on a dominant performance on the road. Preston Medlin leading the team. But right now they need some type of response, Colorado State, to the aggression of Utah State. The Canadian Joe Desimon from Saskatchewan will head to the bench after making both free throws. Full court pressure from the Rams. And the Aggies get it in the trusted hands of Preston Medlin. This is one of those things, a, a telling sign of a well-coached team. You have the lead on the road, they're just gonna grind you down and execute on the half court. Medlin, if he needs to, can create off the dribble. Gets the screen. Floater, no. Tip, no good. Loose ball. And a foul. Davis got fouled. Davis did the Cardinals sit, and I'll ask, I'll ask you, you're 6'11". He brought the ball down yeah. where the guards could get you to You saw it. that, too. Yeah. yeah, that's one of those things that coaches tell you when he's getting some instructions from his assistant coaches. You know, you do the right thing. You're hustling on the boards. Sean Davis doing an excellent job of competing. When you come and get that offensive rebound, when you're 6'10", never put it on the deck. Those little guys are looking to come up with the steal. Very fortunate to get to the free throw line. And how about Kyle Davis? He's 20 for 22 in the last three games from the free throw line. And look at that, you didn't even jinx him. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> Tried to give him the broadcaster's jinx. Still made it. 21, sorry, 20 of, 21 of 23 now. Avila creates some space and gets the basket. Avila 
leads the Rams in scoring more than 17 points per game, but he struggled shooting tonight, just three for 10. He's got 14 points. I was here less than a week ago and watched Colorado State dominate UNLV. I mean, start to finish, so just being here on back-to-back -back weeks, it's hard to believe what I'm seeing. As Utah State is the team dominating tonight. Still time, though. Particularly when you're able to do that, get to the free throw line. Stop the clock and cut into the lead. See, Bejarano taking the advice of his coach, being aggressive, drawing the foul. Here's what Bejarano means to his team. He's second in points, first in rebounds, second in assists, first in steals, and first in minutes. He does it all for this team, Mr. Versatility. Right, in that game that you were here last week, you almost had a tri triple-double. is fouled. That's team foul number nine. Utah State's already committed 10, so we're one away from both teams being in the double bonus. This is a shooting foul. So Shaw to the free throw line. For a big guy, he's an excellent free throw shooter at 80%. Let's talk strategy down the stretch. If you're Colorado State and you hope to foul and have missed free throws, that's gonna be tough because Utah State, an excellent free throw shooting team, just under 74%. And especially if they're gonna be in the double bonus pretty soon. You have, on both teams, they have to defend aggressively. It's a fine line. You have to defend aggressively without fouling. Shaw knocks down both free throws very calmly. And Utah State on the night is nine for nine from the free throw line. So if you think they're gonna miss free throws to get you back in the game, it's not gonna happen. It's not gonna happen. That's why you have to force turnovers, see if you can, you know, speed up the tempo of Utah State this entire evening. They've executed extremely well. See if you can force some turnovers, something that Utah State doesn't normally do. But you got to be able to find a way somehow, some way to chip back into this lead. Soft touch. This Colorado State team has a lot to look forward to, though. Almost everybody's coming back. Santo will graduate, the Brazilian. But almost everybody else will be back for this team. And Larry Eustachie, real excited about the guys who are coming in and the guys who will become eligible for next year. And he really wants this team desperately to get to any form of postseason play so these guys get more practice time and more games to get. More games, so it's also about, the, the, like you mentioned, the experience factor going forward for this young team. Expectations are gonna be high. They have a lot of talent. They're going to be expected to compete for the Mountain West Championship or Mountain West title next year. Utah State trying to do something they haven't done this entire season. That's win a conference game on the road. They're 0-5. Medlin turns it over. Hurst before the shot. But they're already in the double bonus, so he'll shoot two. That's exactly what you want. You need to force turnovers, defend without fouling, and then get up, pick up the tempo, and get out in the open court and see if you can't get to the free throw line. Again, it's key. You want to be able to cut into this lead without any time coming off the clock. Carlton Hurst to the free throw line, a 62% free throw shooter. what they're looking at right now at the scores table. Apparently it's going to require more officials to determine. See the Euro step right there. Stay on. Good job of staying on balance for Carlton Hurst. But Utah State had already has already committed 10 team fouls, so it really doesn't make any difference whether it was before or after the shot. It's two free throws either way. I'm sure they'll come over and tell us what they're looking at right now. Oh, they're thinking of adjusting the time on the clock. 
See the turnover right there. That's what they need to do, force those turnovers, get out into the open court. See the Euro step right there, just slowing down your timing, but staying on balance. The it, shot clock seemed accurate based on that reflet. Question is the game clock. I'll tell you what, Colorado State will take all the time they... Anything they get, they'll <laughs> yeah. take one extra second. They've added at nine seconds. Free throw is good. We have two great college basketball games coming your way tomorrow on CBS Sports Network. At 7, check out UT Martin as they hit the road to battle with Southeast Missouri State. After that, we have a Mountain West battle as New Mexico visits Boise State as a part of Wednesday Showcase on CBS Sports Network. Nice pass. Butterfield gets it inside to Jordan Stone. And Stone's been affected, effective in that post. Even when he has a shot, he's gotten the ball out to his teammates. Bejarano deep three, no. Battle for the loose ball. Aggies come away with it. And the Aggies have not won a game on the road in Mountain West play. You see what they're going to do. They're just going to grind down this Colorado State defense. Last possession, they did a good, good job of doing high-low basketball, which resulted in a layup. Davis got a screen, but it's going to be an offensive foul on Jordan Stone. So we will take a break. Larry Eustace has pulled a lot of miracles. He needs a minor miracle tonight because Utah State has been too good. Great pass, sets up the big guy for the easy finish. AP Top 10 scoreboard, Jaron, Florida beats Tennessee. Wichita State stays undefeated. And for all the Mount West fans watching, what do you think of the San Diego State at Wyoming matchup tonight? Well, look, San Diego State, they had a close one at Boise State. We'll see what happens at Wyoming. Very difficult place to play on the road. Coming up next, we take you into the studio and down the road to the Final Four with highlights, analysis, and March implications from around the country. Inside college basketball, only on CBS Sports Network, the 24-hour home of CBS Sports. Avila, he can hit that three. Off the back iron, long rebound. And Medlin tried to tap it to himself, and Bejarano picks up the foul, but a very smart play from Preston Medlin. What did Coach Morrill tell us at shoot around? He has a high basketball IQ. Tried to tip it to himself. Kept, posit kept position. Able to get to the free throw line. Free throw is good for Medlin. Medlin leads all scorers with 17 points. Points. And those 18 points move him into 16th all-time in scoring at Utah State. Now Preston Medlin continues to move up several of the leaderboards in Utah State history. Octavius has been great on that floater tonight. You see Colorado State, they're still playing hard, they're still competing. They're trying to force turnovers. They're getting up and pressuring. Do you start to consider fouling if you're the Rams? I mean, time's slipping away. Shaw's knocking down jumpers. It just seems like, don't they need a greater sense of urgency? Right now, I see if you can force, uh, force traps, see if you can speed up their tempo, Utah State's tempo, that is. But again, if you're sending the, the, the number one free throw shooting team in the conference to the free throw line, I don't know that that's a, a prudent strategy. Oh. Loose ball on the jump floor, on, jump it up, jump possession jump to Utah State. Right here. Right here. 
Timeout on the floor. Both teams in the double bonus. Utah State has three timeouts left. Colorado State has one timeout left. 2.14 remaining. It's a 17 point game. What, if anything, can be done by Colorado State to at least make Utah State uncomfortable in this final 214? Again, you have to put pressure on that Utah State defense. See if you can get something in the paint, attacking, getting to the free throw line during the double bonus. See if you can cut into that lead without any time coming off the clock. But then on the defensive end for Colorado State, they need to force traps. See if you can you know, get somebody in a hot box. See if you can force a turnover and then play in the open court. But right now, again, I don't know that you can foul Utah State because they've been making their free throws all evening long. Here comes the full court pressure. They're all over Medley. Butterfield gets it down court. Timeout Utah State before they got the ball into the front court. And Butterfield <laughs> upset. He says, Coach, come on. We had it all set up. We did it just like you told us to do. Well, Sue's smiling. So he's OK with it. Well, the, the coaching staff was looking around. And they're like, hey, we didn't call the timeout. It was Preston Medley, uh -huh, okay. the guilty party. But Mount West Royalty coaches with 400 plus career wins, two of them right here at Moby Arena. Stu Morrow, Steve Fisher, Larry Eustachy. Steve Fisher has won the most out of those three guys in the Mountain West, though. Just to be clear, most of his wins have come in the Mountain West. The other coaches have bounced around a little bit and been in different conferences. Morrill in his 16th year at Utah State. And Utah State just recently joining the Mountain West. And Medlin steps on the baseline. But if nothing else, Utah State uses 29 of the 35 seconds on the shot clock. Again, that's what they're looking to do. The clock is their enemy right now. Just see if they can just use clock, take the air out of the ball. Just execute on the off, on the half court. And right now they're not even playing the foul. 92 seconds to go. One thing you can always say about a team coach by Larry Usacy is they are not going to give up. And they continue to play. There's a turnover. Right, look, they want to build towards the future. But one thing coaches never want to coach is effort. And right now, his players are giving him effort. They're getting up and competing. They're going to play this game out. It's going to probably come up a little bit short. Obvious drive, jump step, yes. He's got that move down, Pat. That's the fourth time we've seen him make one of those shots in the lane tonight. And that's what Coach Station wants to see, his guys not give up. Continue to attack, continue to play hard, even though this game is pretty much in hand. So John Octius, in a game in which the rest of his team hasn't given him much, Octius has gone for 18 points. Bejarano has gone for 16. As Butterfield calmly hits the free throw, Butterfield an 82% free throw shooter. He made history tonight, Butterfield, knocking down the 100th three of his career. Spencer Butterfield. How about Utah State coming in here on the road, continuing it, continuing their win streak. They're playing so much better in the second half of this conference play. Bejarano hits the jumper. And again, this is a Utah State team that has really struggled on the road. Has not won a conference road game. Akius is three is way off. And it'll be Ram basketball. Great hustle, but we just talked about. Is this Ram team will play hard until there's no time left on the clock? Bejarano, the good hustle there. Look at this. You see Kyle Davis kind of give up on the play. Bejarano sticking with it. Great heads up play, throwing it off. 
the opponent. Akpias is fouled on the three-point attempt. So he'll go to the line to shoot three. And I saw the coaching you right there. Your hands went up in the air. You can't foul the three-point shooter right now. Oh, it gets even better from that. I've seen this one. I think Kyle Davis is going to get the quick hook right now. Coach Davis, the look on the look on Coach Morrill's face right now. Incredulous. He just what are you doing? Can't foul a three-point shooter with the game in hand. With Jalen Moore waiting at the scorer's table. That's one of those. I've been there. It's just a, you know, it happens. It's just a, just a brain freeze situation. The Stanford grad admitting to a brain freeze on the court. Yeah. I gotta mark the time down. <laughs> 42 <laughs> seconds to go. Pretty see Coach February Moore. 11th. <laughs> you see Coach Morrow getting my all hair team guy, Jalen Moore, back in the game. But the guy whose hair you liked as much didn't get on the floor tonight. It was a black top. Sean Harris. Sean Harris, you had a little kid in play thing working at shoot around today. And we get a shot at the Utah State bench if there's another foul before this game ends. And there is the foul. So we can see your kid in play guy. <laughs> yeah, there, there it is. Go. It's nice. On the all hair team. So he's first team all hair, and that makes Jalen more aware. Is he also on the first team or is he on Absolutely. the second team? Okay. What did Coach Morrill say? Uh, about, uh, he got a little bit more lenient as he's yes. gotten older. He's not so old school anymore. He's, these guys want to grow their hair. I'm good with it. Yeah, he, yeah, he yep. said that that's the way the guys wore his, their hair. Excuse me, the way his teammates wore their hair back in the 70s. So who's he to begrudge some of his young players? I, if people want to bring back Dr. J's hair from the 70s and that's make classic. that the norm, I'm comfortable with it. I like it. All right, we're gonna look at standings, making this already a win. So Utah State, now ahead of Colorado State, even though the records are the same because they sweep the Rams this season. Right now, they're a scary basketball team. They've got the perimeter play with Butterfield and Medlin. They've got the inside presence with Davis and Shaw. Playing with a lot of confidence on a three-game win streak. Toes put back, no good. Colorado State won an offensive basket interference. They don't get the call, but they do have the ball. Where was this urgency in the first half? This is the type of sense of urgency that Colorado State has to start the basketball game with. They just didn't have it tonight. It happens. Two foul shots coming up for Octavius. You see it. You see the look of frustration yeah. on the on the team right now. But this is one of those things, you know, nobody in the conference is gonna feel sorry for you. And Coach Eustace understands that. You know, he's gotta regroup and keep playing forward. One shot straight in white. Aggies do not have to shoot, but they will get fouled to Butterfield to the free throw line. Nineteen point three seconds to go. When you see the final score tomorrow, it's not going to look like a blowout. But for those of us who are here at Moby Arena, got to give Utah State credit. They got out early, and until the last five minutes, they dominated. They made shots. They made perimeter shots. They had a lot of good looks from the three-point line early in the game. They dominated the, the battle of the boards. And then they just defended the heck out of Colorado State. Really frustrating them. Team triple, Bejarano. Again, to Colorado State's credit, they've continued to play through. You fight through to the very end. Bejarano's now got 21 points. It's a nine-point game. And that is going to be our final score. 
71 to 62. Utah State first road win since November 26th at away from tonight's game, Jaron. Just a dominant performance from Utah State. They've got knockdown shooters. They do a terrific job on the boards, and they can defend the heck out of you. They're going to be scary down the road for a lot of teams. They still have very tough competition coming up. They play against San Diego State and New Mexico, so the road doesn't get any easier for them as they come down the, down the final stretch, but they're playing extremely well right now. Both teams have six regular season games remaining. Our final score from Moby Arena. Utah State defeats Colorado State 71 to 62. On behalf of Jaron Collins and our entire crew, I'm Ari Wolf. For scores, highlights, features, and more, go to CBSSports.com. This has been a presentation of CBS Sports Network, the 24-hour home of CBS Sports. Coming up next, it's Inside College Basketball. So long from Fort Collins, and thanks for watching. Take care, everybody.